analogy. It's like when you tell it, tell a child, don't go in that room. What's the first thing they do is they go right in the room. This is we don't live in a no universe. We live in a yes universe. Oh, so taking it. your mind and allowing it to say yes to something that you'd like to say yes to, as opposed to trying to fix or correct something that's really charged for you. So Affirmations are anything that we say in the positive. Say, raise the vibration of your mind body complex. Mind. There's 10 million different ways to do it. None of them are wrong. Then some of the other ways to connect are prayer and affirmation. And I like to put those two together because prayer does, depending on where we're coming from, have the connotation of belonging to religion, which usually is very codified and tells you this is the way that it's supposed to be done. These are the things that you are supposed to say. Um, I like to think of prayer as being a little bit more elastic and related to affirmations. Affirmations are anything that we say in the positive um, that are designed to make us um, feel better and resonate. They, they're ways for conditioning the mind um, and our energetic body. So I am love is an affirmation as opposed to one day I'm going to feel love because this isn't really set in the present. And if it will say today, I will not be angry. Really what the sort of thinking mind attaches itself to is angry mm -hmm. because that's the trigger word. But if I say peace today, I am peaceful. Then it sets it in the present moment and it sets the word peace as the sort of thing that the mind latches onto. Um, a way I like to think about this is we don't live in a no universe. We live in a yes universe. So when it comes to the functioning of the mind, you've heard the, the old adage, what you resist persists. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that's coming up for you mentally that you're working on, when you resist it, when you go, no, mm -hmm. literally your mind goes, okay, I'm going to give you more of that. Mm -hmm. It's total reverse psychology. It's like when you tell, it, tell a child, don't go in that room. What's the first thing they do is they go right in the room. So um, really, uh, when this happens to the mind, when you find yourself sort of grasping on to something that you don't want to grasp onto, you don't try to correct it. You just focus on something else that's positive. Um, so that's how I like to think of prayer and affirmation is about taking your mind and allowing it to say yes to something that you'd like to say yes to, as opposed to trying to fix or correct something that's really charged for you. So let's say you are working on something um, and you're like, I'm going to make it right. Actually, what can be very beneficial is just letting that thing be for a moment and focusing on something that doesn't have quite as much of a charge and getting your mind into a positive state. Like, I really like how soft the pillow is in my bed. Mm -hmm. Or I really like the temperature in this room. Or today is a great day for me. Whatever it is that's working for you. But prayer and affirmation, sort of putting it in that context so that when we come across it, there is a little bit of background and, and how our mind might work. And a way to focus that helps us get into a place that doesn't create anxiety because when we're trying to fix things with prayer or affirmations, it tends to create more resistance. So if there's something that you're working on, one of the ways in which I like to sort of approach it initially is to step away from it, to let it be, and to start getting your mind to a place where it's feeling good and in positive vibration. Then eventually what happens is when you elevate your mind and your vibration to a different level, when the time comes for this thing that you're working on to come back into your energy field, you're able to perceive it and handle it from a different level of vibration. Whereas when you're at the level of the problem and you're trying to fix it, you have no tools. You're, you're in the place where you're stuck. So this is the, the reason for sort of taking your mind up here, your energy vibration up here, so that when that thing that you're working on comes back through your energy field, you're seeing it from a different perspective. You're more empowered. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. Um, and again, that is how prayer and affirmation works in regards to angels and fairies. 
you put yourself into that mindset where you're sort of, it's like going to the supermarket and choosing what foods you're going to put into your body. So same way you're choosing what thoughts and vibrations you're going to resonate with, you're going to hold on to and use over and over again. All right, then meditation. Again, this is all about quieting the mind, getting the mind to vibrate at a higher level, because when we get to a more quiet mind to a more high vibratory um, state of mind, um, we're able to hear and communicate with angels and fairies more easily. Um, meditation. So meditation classically is just quieting the mind. There's 10 million different ways to do it. None of them are wrong. Um, I recommend finding one that works for you. It can be as simple as going for a walk. It can be as complicated as doing Vipassana for 10 days in silence. Totally up to you. Um, I won't give you a talk on meditation because this isn't a talk on meditation. <laughs> um, but I do recommend it because meditation is the workout for your mind that you would give the workout for your body when you go to the gym. The more you meditate is the more quiet your mind will be in general, just like the more you exercise, the better your fitness will be in general. Mm -hmm. um, other ways to actually quiet the mind or let's say raise the vibration of your mind body complex is playing, being in joy, singing, dancing, anything that brings you joy, writing if you like writing, yelling if you like yelling, hiking if you like hiking, anything that you enjoy that brings you joy is a great way to raise your vibration. And it will also help to cancel out the worry, static noisiness of the mind because joy is a very, very clear, open vibration where the mind is quiet and the experience of joy is what takes over. Um, so play and joy, they go hand in hand. Another um, way to connect um, is if you have children or if you work with children or if you're just observing children, generally speaking, children are at a much higher vibratory level. They're more connected to what's happening in the other dimensions and their way of seeing, their way of interacting with nature and other people is very open. Um, and just by observing a child or working with a child or being with your child, your niece, your nephew, whoever it is in your life, um, you can connect um, to this state of mind by being in their presence. So that's another way. And it's also connected to joy because children really know how to play much better than us adults do at times. Um, okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of setting the mood um, and quieting the mind. If you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have an amazing link right there for some cool products. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time. Have a beautiful, blessed day.